Hi everyone, it's another beautiful day in self-isolation and yesterday I made some Makigi pins and uh, the reason why I did that is because um, I'd like to take apart my swords quite a few times to sharpen them and with the soft bamboo ones then when you take them apart enough then they just fall apart and um, so I made some brass ones and the reason why I took so long rather than just using a thin brass round that just sits in nicely is because holes aren't perfectly round and in a sword, the only thing holding your blade to the rest of the sword are those, those pins. So they have to be made perfectly. So it's a long process of sharpie in, stick it in, test fit, take away the excess over and over and over again. So it took me about five hours to make four of them yesterday. And an update on the blisters. Not sure if you can see that, but there's one there, one there, one there, and a big fat one there. Um, but I'd say it was worth it. Had a lot of fun. So today I'm going to be taking apart the swords and sharpening them. Alright, so let's talk about what gear you need to sharpen swords. First, you need a sword to sharpen. Um, but as for the actual equipment, you've got lots of paper towel. Um, got a towel for drying the mess. And I have a whetstone. Um, this one's been soaking in water for quite some time. Um, I like to use Thousand Grip for mine. Um, this one's a particularly cheap one. I think I got it for about 20 bucks off eBay. But I use my brother's Shun Stone. That one costs about $100 and that was a very nice stone to use. This one is not quite as nice, but it does the job. Um, always make sure you soak your wet stones, otherwise they just scratch your blades. Um, I also have a kit here. In here I have a hammer to take, away, take apart the blades, polishing stone, um, some towels and some oil. And that's for after it's done sharpening. Alright, so once you've got your sword, then find your pins. Take it out. And using your hammer, then unscrew the top. Comes out nicely. This is your pin to remove these pins. So you find your pin, place the end there and just tap. Never tap too hard, otherwise things get damaged. It's a no-brainer really. And keep your pins in a safe spot. Right, so once when your pins are out, then holding the sword like this, use your hand and just tap. As always, keep the orientation intact. While I've got it apart, I may as well explain it. So this is the suka, or the handle. You grip it. Um, it's wrapped in a way so that it fits in the fingers nicely. Um, and these metal will fit in so that everything holds together. These are the Manuki. Uh, they just add a little bit of thickness so that you can grip onto them. Some people like them, some people hate them. Makiki pins go into this, hold it to the blade. Um, these copper things here are sepa. They're spaces that are made of a softer material so that if anything gets put under tension then they deform rather than the actual guard or the handle or the blade. Um, this is a guard, this one's made out of iron um, but there's a few different materials that they use for it. It's pretty self-explanatory, it protects your hand. Now this brass thing here is called the habaki. Um, what this does is it's a brass shock absorber so when you hit things this is softer than the steel, so the shock gets taken out of here rather than all into your hand. Some of it still does go into your hand, but this takes out quite a fair amount of it. Alright, now that you've got your blade free, then it depends what you want to do to sharpen it. If you're sharpening because it's really blunt, then I like to do short strokes uh, and then alternate so that I make a crisscross pattern. Um, but if it's pretty sharp like mine but you're just adding a final sharpen or a finish sharpen. Uh, I like to do long strokes along the whole length of the blade and the most important thing is just make sure you keep the angle the same. The reason why I'm sharpening is because I want to try a new exercise which I haven't done. Normally my blades are pretty blunt, um, they're not fantastically sharp because I don't believe in having a razor sharp blade. I don't think it's good for training because it teaches you bad skills because it, the blade does all the work. Um, but for this new exercise, I do need a slightly sharper blade than these uh, are at the moment, so I do need to sharpen them. Alright, so with the whetstone, I find that if I put a piece of kitchen towel here, 
when I sit it on here and I press down, it just prevents it from moving around as much. It's not fantastic. There are rubber grips and stuff, uh, but I don't have one. Uh, the, the important thing with a wet stone is always keep it wet. It's a wet stone, not a dry stone. Haha, uh -huh, funny dad joke. Um, but yeah, so if it's dry, then it'll damage the blade because it's just not, not lubricating enough and you end up with deep scratches in it. So what I do is I like to keep my bucket, put it somewhere accessible, so I can just dip my hand in and just give it a splash. That way I've always got lubrication. Now as for the actual sharpening, then I start just shy of the kisaki or the point, and I just push. The reason why I do the kisaki separately is because the angle changes throughout. And um, some people can do it in one go. It's a bit of an art. Uh, it's a bit of an art, but I don't think I'm that skilled. I'll just remember to sharpen both sides. Now people ask why I use such a high grit stone, it takes so long when I can just use a 240 grit stone to sharpen it quicker. The reason why is because a high grit stone uses, uh, leaves smaller scratches, so that's less places for rust to get into, keeps the edge slightly better because it's not going to rust and degenerate, um, but it does take longer and if you're, you do have to work up the stone. So if your blade isn't really fit and finished like this one, then you can't start with a high grit stone and expect to just sharpen it using the high grit stone no matter how long you take. As you can go, you can use some paper to test. You see it's, it's sharp and it's probably where I need it to be, but I started on the point. I'd say that's sharp enough for me now. So after you're done sharpening, there's a few steps you've got to take, and I'll walk you through them. First things first, dry your blade. Now after you've dried your blade, this is a powder stone. Um, it's a final finishing stone. It just helps seal the surface as well as get rid of any dirt or anything that you didn't wipe off with the tissue. Just a few taps of this along the blade both sides. And some soft tissue. And just focus on polishing every aspect of it, including the spine. You can see it took off quite a bit of dirt there. Uh, and after that's oiling. So after you're done polishing, Always put your blade in a soft spot when you do other things. Right, so I've got some kitchen towel, just fold it in half twice. Get your oil, I'm using choji oil, that's the traditional oil used for Japanese blades, but you can use probably any oil, it'll, it'll stop the rusting. So then just a dab, a tiny bit is enough, you don't need much. And after that, just run along the blade, uh, cover every surface. Um, and make sure it's a thin coat, you don't want to slather it on too thick. Alrighty, that's one blade finished. Just got to put it back together the same way as I took it apart and then work on the second blade. Habaki goes on first. Always make sure you keep it the right way up and this, the point facing the point. And it should fit in along the spine, so that the spine and the habaki blend seamlessly together. Then it's the sepa and the guard. And it's the handle. Traditionally, you can just tap the bottom. 
and it'll go in. Uh, but my swords aren't expensive enough. I can't afford one that's made perfectly enough to do that. Um, so use the wooden block again to Nothing wobbles, nothing can move. And then that's when you put your pegs in. Now your pegs are tapered and only go in one way. And each peg should have its own hole. So for my pegs, I cut a slot into the back one. So I know that that's the back peg. Mark them however you want. They also only go in one way. So work out which way you took it out and that's the way it goes in. Same thing as before, using your brass hammer and just tap gently. Uh, I don't know if you saw that but the top of my hammer popped off. Mine's a really cheap one so it doesn't hold together nicely. Expensive ones do uh, but it still functions as a hammer. The top's supposed to come off anyway. So that's one blade done. I'm going to go and do the other one um, and in the next video I'll show you what the special training that I've been sharpening these for is. Hi everyone, thanks for watching my video. Um, if you are in self-isolation or you have come in contact with people who are unwell in the last 14 days, please do take it seriously. Please do practice your social distancing. Um, people say, yeah, but I'm young and healthy. I'll recover from it anyway. And that may be true, but it's not about you. It's about the elderly, the immunocompromised, the people who are at actual risk. So do it for them. Take it seriously. Please stay at home. Find things to do. Train harder. Do a million push-ups. I don't care. Just don't go out. Don't affect others. Stay safe, everyone.